All right, so now we're going to review webbing of the label applicator. As you can see, I'm already webbed up. Let's say I want to change over or my liner broke or something like that, and I have to re-web this printer. So over here, I'm just going to tear the liner. This is simply my waste take up. So I've got my waste in the form of just liner. I'm going to twist it, remove it, toss it in the garbage. Right here is my pinch and peel roller. This is what's actually driving the label out of the applicator. You're gonna see this little handle here and we've got no gap. This is closed and tight. If I go and I open the handle, it releases my liner so that I can flow through. I'm gonna come around the peel plate. I'll just tear that liner there. <clears throat> Unweb everything, open up my Zebra printer. And so in the Zebra printer, I've got two points of closed contacts. The latch here is for my print head. If I unlatch it, I can lock it into place so that that doesn't move and, and drop down on me. And then I've also got my gap sensor latch, which I press this button, releases, and now I can pull straight through my zebra printer over here i have a brake arm if this brake arm is all the way in the up position it's going to create resistance for me spinning the label as soon as i release that brake arm i can then free spin and i can wind up or unwind my labels and on the supply spool portion it's just simply pulling out putting back in now whenever i'm winding up or webbing up the label applicator, I always want to remove the first, let's call it five or six labels from the liner. The reason for that is past the peel plate, I don't want to have any labels because if it gets jammed up in this pinch and peel roller or on the waste take up roller, it's just going to create a mess and you're going to have to clean off adhesive and it's just not fun. So I remove the first five or six labels, toss it on the ground like an animal, and whenever I'm webbing this, depending on how I'm looking at it, I want the tail to hang off the left side or if you're looking from the back, from the right side. First point of contact, which is num or labeled number one, is gonna be my idler roller, it's a fixed roller. I'm gonna come around there over the brake arm. And now when I pull on the liner, you'll see I'm pulling on that brake arm at the same time, and it gives me some slack. The way I like to do this, and everybody will have their different preference, is create a good amount of slack so that I can kind of drop everything in place. Now when I'm webbing through the zebra, I wanna go over roller number three, and I need to go in between these two stainless steel rods. You can see the ribbon is kind of slopped over here and it might get in my way, so I'll just manually turn the take-up portion to create some tension. And I'm simply going to drop inside of the applicator, or of the printer, I'm sorry. And so I've already messed up by, not, by putting it over the stainless steel roller, which will give me problems. So I'm gonna course correct. I'm gonna come down. Now, a couple of key things, if you can notice in here, is here I've got another web guide to help track uh, properly through the Zebra printer. And then also, too, if we come around to the edge, you're gonna see a little metal plate down there. My ribbon has to be on the top of that metal plate and my label needs to be below it super easy to put the label above this plate. If you do that and you start running, it's just gonna tear the liner and create a mess for you. This has to do with our ribbon sensor, which we'll talk about shortly. So once I get through the Zebra printer, I'm gonna leave everything open. I've got roller number four. I'm actually going underneath that. And I'm gonna just pull to create tension down the line where I started. I'm coming over the secondary brake arm, which is label number five, and I'm creating tension 
Now, I'm gonna be super careful up here because I found that if you leave too much slack, it's easy for the liner to get caught on the stopper. And as I'm pulling through later, it can cause the liner to rip and I'll have to start all over. So I'll keep tension here by placing my hand on it. I'm coming around roller number six. And now I'm gonna make my way through the peel plate, which I've numbered number seven. When I come through the peel plate, you're gonna find that sometimes there's a little bit of friction between the peel plate and the plant or and the wrap belt. So you just have to be conscious of there not to, to tear. And then another super important part is my liner is going through the horseshoe, horseshoe sensor, which is our web sensor. Now I'm gonna go around the back, but I'm gonna leave the video over here. This makes it easier coming around the backside for me anyway, so that you don't have to reach over. And again, I'm pulling, as you can see, I'm short. So I'm gonna start pulling the label through back towards the zebra and start making my way forward. And again, you can see I kind of got caught on this rubber stopper. So I'm gonna lift up here, pull through. I'm still running a little bit short. And so I'm just gonna kind of repeat that process until I got all of the label and liner pulled through and enough slack to make it to my take up. So I believe that should get me to the waist take up roller. Here I've got number eight. I'm gonna go on the underside of it and I'm gonna feed through my drive rollers. Now I'll come around to the other side. And again, I'm constantly looking to make sure that everything is falling within the guides. I'm not getting caught anywhere. The liner's not catching the bottom corner of the peel plate. Once I've got that, I'm comfortable and confident. I'm gonna kind of just web this liner through these spindles. And what I like to do, which is taught to me by one of our other technicians, is I'll close the pinch and peel roller with the label head off. So I'll click the label head off. I can now freely pull the label and liner through the system. And so what I'm doing is a manual feed of a label, maybe one or two, to make sure that everything is tracking properly throughout and I'm not hearing any liner tear. If I hear any tearing sound, I immediately stop, find out where it's tearing and why. Once I get a couple of these labels successfully off, I, it looks good, I'm happy with it. I'll put the cap back on, adjust the tension of the ribbon and the zebra printer, Close here, close there, close the cover. On the zebra printer, I have to hit the pause button. And now what I'll do is turn the label head back on, hit the feed button, and make sure everything is tracking as it should.